Eta, noski, eskoletan, gure eskoletan. Yes, of course, in our schools, projects are created as well as in other places. So now let's going to see another uh, applied innovation. Uh, Jan, I want the two Jans to please uh, join me. John, how did you manage all these uh, innovation projects? And what do we do in Technica in the sphere of applied innovation? Well, I'm going to talk about some of the projects that we've developed in Technica, but now I'm not afraid of saying that technology uh, affects all spheres of life. And if you don't agree, please uh, uh, talk with Mark Vidal, our speaker this morning. So it affects uh, everyone, but something that's also very interesting is that we people are the ones to develop this technology. So there's a double role. We are affected, or we have the effect of technologies, but we are also agents when developing. The amount of opportunities is so immense that we are not going to be able to develop absolutely everything and to focus on everything. So first of all, we need to decide on what to specialize on. We need to specialize on those where we believe we have a solid base and where there's a perspective for the future and where maybe we don't have so much competition as in other fields. And that's a a significant decision that is made that by the government. We have specialization uh, policies of the Basque government, and we uh, follow this in VT. So that is uh, the first important thing I wanted to tell you all. Going to uh, vocational training, I believe that there are two features that I believe are very important. Amongst the 70 to 80 percent of the industrial jobs have to do or uh, will have to do with uh, those that have had a, a vocational training. The students we're training today will be in the labor market for 50 years. And it's very pretentious to believe that I will be teaching them something that they will need in 50 years. So we also need to teach them that this is the starting point, that we will try to give you the best position, but this is a starting point. And that's also a very significant idea. The other one is that the businesses are exactly in the same position. They are competing and are in the same position. They compete with uh, technologies, with substitutes of their products. They are in a difficult situation. And mainly, it's a complex situation for small SMEs that are, cannot follow this uh, speed of a change. So with these two ideas, we believe that our innovation system has to focus on those uh, students, uh, providing them with the uh, skills necessary that will, they will need to continue developing through their life and also by providing help to those SMEs. But this is all done by peoples, by teachers. So in the center of this system, we have teachers. We develop the projects with the teachers. We develop the activities with the teachers. We provide services to businesses with the teachers. The teachers are in the schools, but they also develop the systems to provide uh, solutions in a faster manner to the technological uh, changes that we face. I would say Mm, technological changes affect us as users because as, I, as a user, I need to use my mobile and other technologies that uh, make my life easier. As a, a, a user, uh, I have to uh, use it. If not, I will be left behind but also as a, an enhancer of a technology. And that requires being specialized and being very good at something, uh, not only to understand the technologies, but also to promote them. And uh, this provides a, a financial benefit for the Basque society. So we started the fourth plan, taking into account all of these ideas. And here on the screen, you can see the technological innovation system and some of the programs developed. And uh, we connect this with a strategy. What does this mean? It means that we've started uh, 
a specific uh, school, some people that are in contact with those places where the policies are uh, developed. We are part of the pilot groups, and now no one uh, uh, says that uh, VET is not one of the agents that is participating in the creation of the 2020, 2024, 2026 strategy or whatever strategy. So now VET is one of the stakeholders that has a significant role. This is something that we uh, develop through this uh, uh, notes. We also talked about the businesses. We're going to uh, provide services uh, because the SMEs have difficulties and because we have the know-how and the tools that could help them give their first steps in innovation processes for them to uh, um, be able to continue moving forward. We have uh, 500 foreseen for this uh, year and many businesses with whom we work and uh, we uh, sometimes provide a service, sometimes not, but we do. Are, we are in contact with them. And then there's something else. One, on the one hand, we have the service provide to companies, and uh, on the other hand, we had uh, the learning uh, process for the teaching staff. We were talking about Google and data and all that. Well, in our case, uh, the best business with Tecagunes is the uh, um, teachers learning in the uh, businesses themselves about the real challenges and problems faced by the SMEs. That is the real impact uh, that will allow us to improve. And we're also complying with one of our commitments, which is providing support to SMEs. There are trends that have been detected and that are clear, like uh, additive manufacturing, prototyping, uh, virtual reality. We uh, see clear uh, trends, and behind that there are many technologies, but that's not something you can learn and uh, implement in a week. So we have specialization areas. We have to work one, two, three, four years to gather all the know-how, and we develop this with teachers, providing them with the skills, and uh, as Iñaki said, uh, transferring these best practices to VET schools so that what you learn is useful for the, all the schools. And one of the strengths of uh, VET in the Basque Country is uh, how uh, close the schools are uh, to the businesses and to its surrounding area, and we have a program in which uh, the schools provide ideas, we assess them, we provide support to these ideas, and this allows us to be connected with the uh, uh, smaller industries. At the end of the day, this uh, uh, is a uh, an answer to the talents of 2010, how we're going to uh, um, be in a better situation after the crisis. But now we go on to the fifth uh, plan for the Basque Country. And in this fifth plan, the idea, the concepts being uh, teacher-centered and being updated, all of this is connected to our strategy, and all of this is maintained. However, the technologies we're going to work on uh, will change. When we talk about specialization areas, we will be working on things that we didn't work uh, on uh, four years ago because we didn't think they were important then. And to finish uh, um, my uh, talk, I would like to highlight some of the um, technologies we're going to start working with and some of the ones that we will probably have to include later on. One of our first uh, specialization areas are new materials. We are now working with composites. When we talk about new materials, we're not only focusing on composites. We talked about how bio and nanotechnologies will provide new features and products, and this will be incorporated in new materials. And now we mainly focus on composites. We are not the ones developing these new resins, but we do work on the process, the design, and uh, there are teachers that are able to develop those designs. And we do this for a reason. And in, in this case, I would like to ask Jon Artola to help me and to explain what his experience has been in one of these specific projects. Uh, Jon is uh, the teacher of the Don Bosco School. 
Thank you, Jon. I am Jon Artola, and I'm a vocational training teacher. 17 years ago, I had an accident, and as a consequence of that accident, I lost my uh, right leg. Since then, I had to live without my leg. I now work in the mechatronics uh, um, uh, high school of Don Bosco, and I'm also involved in the offshore uh, technologies project. We've been working on the uh, um, blades for the um, wind turbines. And uh, a year ago, they asked me if I wanted to be part of this project that you can see. This is an artificial leg to be able to run. And you can see what the results have been. And I can tell you that it has been a wonderful and very interesting experience. On the one hand, I've uh, been able to learn uh, a lot. And also personally, it has been uh, very uh, significant because after 17 uh, years without a leg, I've been able to uh, make through many of my dreams. So I would like to thank uh, VET and also I would like to thank Technica for giving me this opportunity. So technology improves some things. From the technological viewpoint, this is uh, 3D printing, working with uh, composites, and uh, many other things. What else are we printing and prototyping? This afternoon, you will be able to see your visit how we work on additive manufacturing and new uh, manufacturing processes. And here in the video, you can see an example of how we uh, work uh, in our um, orthopedics and uh, with uh, different industries. And here we have an example of uh, metal additive uh, manufacturing at uh, Technica, but we also work with other uh, uh, techniques at IMH in and El Goyeri schools. We believe this is a sector and a technology that will be in our nautics, in the health sector, and in many other sectors too. So that's why we think it's important. We also talked yesterday about a virtual real, um, virtual and augmented reality and mixed reality. As users, this uh, uh, allow us to learn in a faster manner. We can you know, use simulators to help us learn, but will also help us develop the technology. We have uh, computer families. We have uh, a 3D animation that is going to be developing this content. So we also need to take into account uh, these two elements. For example, as a user, uh, um, cook is or a hairdresser is going to be uh, using this, but someone has to develop the technology so that they can use that, it. We're also, yes, I think we've seen that video before. Mm, sorry for that. Vale. En temas de energía, so regarding energy, we are working on energy savings and the electrification of transport, something we will be focusing on in future years, not only taking into account energy saving, but everything that has to do regarding uh, sensors, autonomous uh, driving, and there's a whole field that maybe we should call mobility more than the automotive uh, sector. So there's a lot to be done in this uh, sector. And uh, regarding energy, We've also um, been working on energy issues for homes, but now we're working on energy for uh, the industry with their recovery energy. And this is one of the things we started to work on and is significant for our industry. Here, just some advertising of one of the competitions we have with our students. Workshops 4.0. We have to develop technologies that our students and workers are going to work in a 4.0 environment and how we design our workshops. We're designing and working on a workshop that includes 
4.0 concepts such as smart workshops. Here, students get used to personal ID for their different tools, connected machines, virtual reality to be able to see the process of how things are done, an RP that gives the, all the data that organizes how the workshops being organized with the view to people that work in workshops getting used to this environment because it's the environment they're going to find in the future. Cybersecurity, big data here, what's going to connect everything in the end. All these different technologies are going to be connected, there'll be sensors, everything will be connected, they're going to have to be safe, and they're going to offer us new opportunities, new possible services. Here we have a world and a, a tremendous opportunities ahead of us. So we have these objectives. We need to train uh, customers and clients and students that are able to operate in this environment. But what about us in VET? Where do we get our data from? How do we keep our di big data? So we can use our data to improve our own VET systems. And I'm going to finish with this slide. Basque Industry 4.0. Why? Because part of the Basque government's Basque Industry 4.0 strategy, there are many things that we've said here today. And I'd like to finish by relating Basque Industry to Technica. You may know that this afternoon, I've just given you a, a taste of what you're going to see this afternoon. You'll see how, what we're doing up in Technica. You see that first time this afternoon. So let's now let Miren and I to say a few words to you. There they are. There they are. Here we are in Technica. As you said, we're getting all the different spaces ready for you. When you come this afternoon, you'll be able to visit 15 different areas, different areas related to Industry 4.0, for example, robotics, security, additive manufacturing, etc. And what's more, spaces related to sustainability, and for training, new methodologies, new learning, teaching methodologies, and other spaces related to our quality systems, management information, course management, and information about different international projects, and a whole load of other things as well. We are here in the Industry 4.0 space, and we've got with us the person in charge of that space, and he's going to explain to us what he's working on. Yes, as you can see, we've got a mini factory of the future with all sorts of technology, late, uh, latest generation sensors, robots, databases, so we can analyze different data to improve project production. And this is to train the teachers of the future. So we, I invite you to come this afternoon and have a mooch around. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. There are people enthusiastically waiting your presence this afternoon, so come this afternoon and visit us, and they'll probably explain a lot better than the way I explained it today, with a little, little bit more relax. Thank you. Thanks, John. John and John. John and John. No,